And good morning, everyone, and welcome to Little River Church. Our liturgist today is Drew, and thank you, Drew, for your leadership. Today, we're celebrating the birth of the United States of America, which means we are mindful of the sacrifices and all that have gone into uh, this country. And we remember both romantically and sincerely uh, the full breadth of the experiences people have had across the United States historically. Uh, just a reminder that our church office in celebration of the 4th of July will be closed tomorrow. Um, one of the nice things about holidays that follow fall on Sundays is that we get to honor them on Monday. And so our offices will be closed tomorrow. Uh, we hope that you have brought with you your elements for today is Communion Sunday. And at that time, we invite you to join in our communion service. We also would like you, if you have not done so already, to sign up for our Sacred Listening Circle. Uh, there is a link in current tidings. Um, we will meet in person on July 18th, two weeks from today, and again on August 1st in the afternoon from three to five. That's on the campus, so we'll be at church. But then on August the 8th from three to five, we will be meeting virtually. So if you haven't done so, please sign up. Uh, we are going to be in small groups and we need to know what our numbers are so that we can organize that appropriately. Our deacons will be assisting uh, the church staff and me during this very special time, a well-deserved time off, a time away for Pastor Alexis. We wanna say thank you to our board of deacons for being available to the congregation during this very special and well-deserved time away for Pastor Alexis. And the book club will meet next Sunday, July 11th at 12 noon. This month's selection is The Water Dancer, a book by Tahanisi Coates, and everyone is welcome to participate in that. With our liturgist Drew, let us now continue in worship. Let us join together in this morning's call to worship. Come into the sanctuary and worship God. We have come to sing, pray, and listen as God is still speaking. God's word is true and calms our fears. Hear our prayers, O God, for your people are calling to you. We have come to worship you.
Join me in this morning's invocation. The prophets of old spoke of God's justice, even when it was unwelcome. Who will hear their message? We will listen and we will hear. Responding to God's call, Jesus traveled preaching and teaching to all who would listen. Who will hear his message? We will listen and we will hear. Christ sent out disciples two by two to spread the good news in any place that would welcome them. Who will hear their message? We will listen and we will hear. God's prophets are among us still, around the world and in these pews. Who will hear their message? We will listen and we will hear. God, in this hour of meditation, proclamation, and confession, hear the cries and voices of your children. 
we bow humbly before you and seek your ear. Open our hearts to receive your word. Open our eyes to see your blessed presence. Open our ears to answer the calls and cries of your people. Fill us, O oh God, right now with your spirit and give to us courage to step outside the sanctuary and into the throes of life. Amen. From Matthew chapter six, he left that place and came to his hometown and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary and brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? <laughs> and they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the 12 and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. And so they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil, many who were sick and they cured them. Will you pray with me? Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O God, my strength and my redeemer. Well, I wanna say happy birthday, this 4th of July, this day of independence, the birth of this nation. I, I want to say that. But there is the conflict of reality and history. This day, which can be celebrated or commiserated, depending on your position in society and your place in history. But we've been through a lot this past year, this pandemic. All that is taking place near to us and at a distance, we need a break. And so perhaps this holiday, this 4th of July, may give us a sufficient amount of space to exhale. There's so much associated with the 4th of July. Frederick Douglass, who gave that very dynamic speech in the 19th century, reminds us again from a perspective of those who had no freedom, who had no independence, and yet reside in a nation that finds itself celebrating its own independence. It really depends on where we are, what is our station in life, how we perceive and understand this 4th of July. But let's just say today, happy birthday, America. And let us not use it as a time to dismiss, ignore, or pretend as if there is a fantasized reality. But let's go deeper. Let's go into the bowels of history and understand the country and the travesty as well as that which would be victorious, that which is worth celebrating. Let's take time this 4th of July and give thanks to God. But we have survived as a nation that we have made it this far by faith. I also want to say thank you to Drew for reading from the Gospel of Mark, this continuing story of Jesus' power even over death. 
the power to take reality and change it with a word, with a touch, with his presence. And you know, when we read Mark again, as Drew read for us this morning, in times like these, we need Jesus. We need that divinic power and presence to make all things new. We need a miracle today. And what's interesting in this story, as Mark has given it to us in chapter 6, in the first 13 verses, it goes on. Actually, it's picking up from the previous chapter the work of Jesus now in his own community, his own hometown. He's so familiar that people remember his mother. They don't mention his father, but they mention his brothers and they mention his sisters. They know this person who has come home and is speaking truth to power, using his word and his touch to change lives. And they're fascinated by it. They're overcome by it. But sometimes you can be just too familiar to be appreciated. And it is that familiarity that his neighbors are now saying, isn't this Mary's boy? Usually in the Jewish tradition, the child would be spoken about through the father's name, through the father's lineage. But in this case, perhaps they were mocking him. Isn't that Mary's voice? Don't, don't we know his brothers, Joseph and Simon and so forth? Don't we know his sisters are here? And with that, they begin to ridicule him. And with their ridicule, as recorded in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus doesn't have the power that he has exhibited in other places. And he goes on to say that a prophet is not received in his own hometown, among his neighbors and even his family and his kin. Sent with power, not only to proclaim good news, but to set the captives free, to heal the sick, to give sight to the blind, to make the lame walk. Jesus comes home and shares the gift of new life. But those who knew him perhaps too well are incapable of receiving this gift sent with power from God. They can't accept Jesus because to them, he's just another guy. We watched him grow up. We know his family. His power is absent in his hometown. I, I can only imagine the, the frustration and disappointment that Jesus felt. And so he begins to turn to his disciples who are witnesses to this behavior by people who know him, people who watched him grow up, his disciples who are just getting to know Jesus in a more intimate way. They are witnesses to this ill behavior. They are hearing what people are saying. They're ridiculing him and mocking him. And his disciples are wondering, what's going on here? You know, the disciples had also witnessed the power of Jesus. They were there when he fed thousands of people with a couple of loaves of bread and some fish, five loaves of bread and two fish. They were there when he made a dead girl come back to life. He invited them into the house, into the room, and Tabitha come, and this little girl awakens and walks. Jesus is at home this morning. People who knew him perhaps too well or not at all. Jesus comes sent with power from God and tries to speak truth and touch the lives of those he loves, including his family, his neighbors, his friends, his chums. But instead, he is mocked and ridiculed. And that's when he turns to his disciples. And he says, a prophet has no power at home. And he's unable to do any more than that. A few people are able to walk and experience him, but the majority, the, the masses who've come out, he can do nothing for them or with them. And so he tells his disciples, when you go out, take nothing with you. Don't go looking to be paid, looking to be recognized and turned into local celebrities. Take nothing with you. Don't even wear two tunics with you. One, the inner, and the other, the outer. Carry nothing with you. When you go to a place and you're received, stay in that place. 
where people will feed you and care for you, have no expectations. Go and proclaim good news to those who need to be lifted up. Their spirits need to be inspired. Go to those who have been left behind, left to the side, those who are unable to walk, those who can't talk, those who have no place to go. You go and you be with them and have no expectations. And where you are received, bless them. And where you are not received, leave them and knock the dust off your feet. That's, that's a cultural instruction in the Hebraic context. When you've been to a place that has been unwelcoming, you knock the dust off your clothes. You knock the dust mm -hmm. off your feet. So Jesus is giving them a cultural instruction. Don't begrudge them. Just leave them be. How do we understand this today? And, and, and what is this message for us today? We don't have to look very far to find people who are weary and tired, afraid, those who are sick and dying, those who are hungry and begging. We don't have to look too far for our presence to be needed and received. Some of us might be a little timid and shy. We may not want to put ourselves out there that way. We don't want to be public. We rather be private. But in, the, in our midst, in our proximity, are people who are dying to see us literally people who want to be heard and fed. There are people nearby us, even today, who are not comfortable, who are not stable, and they need us. Jesus is telling his disciples, a prophet is not welcome in his own hometown. But that does not mean don't go home. That does not mean don't heal the sick, attend the poor, care for those who have given up. It's a, it's a clarion call. Jesus would say to us as he would say to his disciples, go and do what you must do. Take nothing with you. Have no expectations. But take the word and be present with others. There's, there's good news in a nation that is reeling and suffering, a nation that is drunk on its own success, we really don't know where the United States stands today in the world. We perceive ourselves to be great and powerful, but are we really? All we need to do is scan across these lands, look at the condition of people near to us, people we pass on the streets, some with their hands out, others with signs, those who have given up, those who are lost and don't know their way. We don't have to look too far today. As we celebrate independence, there are those who are dependent, those who have lost their way, and they're waiting for us. They're waiting for another word. They're waiting for someone to care enough to meet their needs or to at least acknowledge their presence. If I were to put it more directly, they're waiting for you. And they're waiting for me right here in this America that celebrates its independence. But that's a misnomer. We are never independent as a nation or even as a person. We are always dependent on others. The, the very light that we have, we may flick the switch, but the power comes from another source. We, we may find ourselves bodily strong. Uh, but our power comes from another source. Just this past week, I lost one of my closest friends, an 87-year-old Fred Zender, my former news director, and my friend, 87 and strong, healthy. We just talked on the phone just a few days ago. But this week, about 7 o'clock Sunday night, while walking across the street in Northern California, he was struck by a drunk driver and killed. Physically strong, clear of mind, of goodwill, and now dead and gone. We just don't know. We might be feeling good on the outside, and we might even feel good on the inside, but we don't know what's waiting for us a moment from now. Those people who came to hear Jesus, and Jesus was very present with them, understood them, 
sought to do good with and for them. And they mocked him. They ridiculed him and called him out. Oh, Jesus tells his disciples, go and do good without expectation. Live our lives without fear and worry. On this 4th of July, we may want to celebrate, but others are commiserating because of the policies and actions that emanate from this government around the world and even here at home. Our priorities, the God we serve is not the God of Jesus. It's the God of capitalism and materialism, idolatry in our midst. We are made comfortable in the midst of misery. And Jesus would call us out today. Jesus would remind us that we have been sent with power to do good, to speak truth, to be the living presence of God with us. Jesus is calling us today. Are we listening? Do our eyes see? Do our minds perceive? Do our ears hear? Do our lips and our mouths proclaim? Jesus is calling us today. Jesus is saying, you have been sent with power for a time such as this. You have been sent to do what is good and just and righteous. The world awaits us today. When we become aware of a reality or a situation, we are obligated to it. When the sick, the infirm, the poor and the hungry appeared before Jesus, he was obligated to them. He sends his disciples out. He says, go and do likewise. I would say through the tunnel of time, Jesus is speaking to us today. Jesus is telling us, pay attention to what we observe. Listen carefully to what we hear. Perceive what we see. And go and do as I've instructed you. It's wonderful to come into a service, to be revived, to be restored. But we must go back into the world. We must step out of our comfort and we must go into the turbulence into the lives of people who await our presence with them. So what will we do? Do we accept Jesus' call to us? Do we accept the reality that we are sent with power into the world even today? And some of us might say, well, I don't know what to say, and I, I surely don't know what to do. That's where the power of God steps in. And don't worry about what you will say, and don't be afraid of what you really can do, but embrace the reality that we have been given power. We have been sent with power for a time such as this, for this very moment. Somewhere right now, someone is waiting for you. Maybe it's a phone call. Maybe it's a morsel to eat. Maybe it's a dollar. To, it's what we have that we are to share and to give without grumbling, without fear, without fret or worry. We are sent with power these days. On this 4th of July, I invite us again to scan history, to pay attention not only to those who are celebrating and glorifying this day, but think about those who are miserable, those who are shamed, those who are unnamed. Think about those whose names we will never know, but their lives are real. Think about the realities and the conditions that may not even be in the history books, but they are just as real. Think about people today and think more deeply about what does this 4th of July truly mean? What are our priorities? How do we apply our policies? What are our practices? Who are celebrating and who are commiserating? On this day, I invite us to redefine this 4th of July. I'm so glad it comes on this Sunday, on our Sabbath. I'm so glad that we are here today in the midst of all that is taking place, hearing another word that reminds us again, we are sent with power, not to keep it to ourselves, but to proclaim good news to those, those ears that long to hear, to touch someone who has not been touched because they smell as if they haven't had a bath because they haven't had a bath. We are called a peculiar people. <laughs> I tell you that over and over again. We are called for a time such as this. This morning, my sisters and my brothers, I invite us to take this Gospel of Mark story where Jesus is performing his miracles and then he turns to his disciples as he turns to us. And he would say, 
you are sent with power. Now go and do likewise. I hope that there is something that is stirring in you right now. I hope that there is something that is perhaps even disturbing you right now. I hope you're prompted to wonder, what can I do? What can I say? Where must I go? If we are to celebrate today, then think beyond ourselves. Think of those who are unable to celebrate because their lives are broken, their hearts are weakened, their resolve is too soft. Think beyond ourselves and think again. We are here, sent with power. For that is the gospel. Praise be to God. made the money, didn't we? Oh. Yeah, 144%. Hi, Little River. I'm Amanda Halstead, chairperson of the music committee. I'd like to give everyone an update on our campaign to raise $6,000 to rebuild the Steinway Model M piano donated to us from the Lombard family. In our first week of the campaign, we received 40% of our goal. In week two, we had 56%. And by week three, we stood at 61%. Here we are in week four, and I'm thrilled to share we have met and even exceeded our goal. The campaign has raised $8,661, which is 144% of our goal. This is an amazing achievement, and on behalf of the music committee and the music staff, thank you. Over the past year, our music ministry has adapted to over a year of recordings and virtual choirs. Our music staff, Ashton and Craig, have done amazing things to keep us together in music fellowship through this pandemic year. It will be exciting to welcome this beautiful instrument to our church as we start to gradually return to the church campus. At the launch of the campaign, the music committee pledged to use any surplus funds to purchase a set of children's chimes for the youth music ministry. This is a project we've been thinking about for a couple of years now. Purchase what? We look forward to celebrating the rebuilt Steinway piano and the children's chimes in special music dedications. Thank you, Little River, for your astounding generosity and support of music in our worship services. Your gifts will be a warm welcome back to all who participate in music ministry as we give thanks for making live music in the coming year. Thank you. Her dress goes nicely with my new swimsuit. <laughs> thank you so much, Amanda. And as Amanda said, thank you, Little River, for your generosity. We come to our time of offering, and you can give your offering to Little River UCC by mailing a check to Little River or by visiting our Donate Online page, which can be found on our website at www.lrucc.org. So yeah. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. We thank you for supporting the ministries of the United Church of Christ and your ministries to Little River UCC. Let us pray. For the blessings that will be made possible with this offering, O God, we give you thanks as we give you praise. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below.
us pray. For the gift of this day, O oh God, we give you thanks. For the opportunity to gather in worship, to praise you and delight to be a part of this beloved community, we are grateful. For your presence with us in trial and rejoicing, we draw strength to embody the good news of Jesus Christ in these challenging and difficult days. Our faith in you is an oaken staff, a traveler's well-loved aid. Our faith is a song of trust that sustains us undismayed. As your presence went with the disciples when Jesus sent them into the countryside to preach and teach, to comfort and heal, so be with us as we take ourselves out beyond the walls and windows of this sacred space to be the body of Christ in the world. On this birthday of our country, we remember the words of the Declaration of Independence that speaks of self-evident truths of all people being created equal and being endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights among which are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. There is much to be thankful for on this July 4th. There is much of our history worthy of praise, people to be honored for their sacrifices, lauded for their willingness to put the needs of others above their own. Yet at times in our history and even today, we have been unable to uphold these words, to guarantee that all people who live within our borders are treated equally and fairly. We live with a legacy of slavery and Jim Crow, with the reality of racism and racial bias and white privilege that despite our best efforts, continue to manifest themselves in words and deeds of people in all walks of life. Help our nation, O oh God, to do better. Help us not to condemn, but to liberate and save. Help us to bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. To stand with the oppressed, to speak truth to power, to be generous and welcoming, to ensure that life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness become a lived reality, enfleshed in the very marrow of the country's bones. Inspire those who lead us to seek justice and love kindness and walk humbly with you. We lift up before you the prayers of concern and thanksgiving shared this day in worship, knowing that even as they are conceived in our minds, you are already at work bringing healing to those who are hurting, comfort for those who are distressed, your presence to those who are lonely, hope to those who are despairing, and joy to those who praise you as with the psalmist, sing to the Lord a new song, God's praise in the assembly of the faithful. As Pastor Alexis begins her leave, we ask you to bless her with refreshment and renewal. And as we prepare next for the celebration of Holy Communion, may the bread that we eat and the fruit of the vine that we drink give us the spiritual sustenance to live fully as Christ's disciples and to rejoice in the work you call us to do. We close these prayers grateful for all we are through you, saying together the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
We gather at this table every month to remember the evening when Jesus gathered his disciples together in a room above the streets of Jerusalem, where he shared with them what we call the Last Supper. For it was on that night where Jesus took the bread and blessed the bread and broke the bread and offered it to his disciples, saying to them, eat this, for this is my body which is broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. In the same manner also, Jesus took the cup and blessed the cup and poured the cup and said to his disciples, here, drink this, for this is my blood which is shed for you. Drink it in remembrance of me. And so I invite you where you are to take the bread and break the bread, for it has been blessed, and eat of the body of Christ. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Drink. And after they had eaten and they had drunk, they sang a hymn and they went out. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, Christ died upon the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, for the gift of Christ, the breaking of body, the pouring of blood, the renewing of our lives. Thank you for forgiving us of our mistakes and restoring us to be in right relationship with you. In Jesus' name, amen.
We're thankful to God for each of you being with us in worship today, and we ask God to be with us. Let us go out now with eyes and ears open to hear and to be heard, and to share the good news with one another. Let us go into God's world unafraid, unashamed, and unapologetic. Let us go audaciously, bodaciously, and courageously into the world. Let us proclaim good news in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Oh.